this is Anna aka the nail architect and welcome back to another video so today's video is a very practical one I'll try not to rumble around and go straight to the point because I want to show you some of the things that I've been using and they might be super helpful for any of my fellow beginners let's talk about the Gelex dupes I've given them the name Gelex but in fact I've changed because although you achieve the same results these are two different techniques hence the change this is no more than full cover tips that you use to create gel extensions these are just normal full cover tips that i bought from amazon and what you do you just etch them so basically you just remove the shine from the inside you apply your builder gel and you cure it onto your nail and then you have a super quick extension hence why i am giving it the name express tips but besides this point I have a couple of things that i want to show you to help this process a lot of people use these mini uv lamps which is completely fine and i use it for a long time and it's very very good however having to click here on the button and hold it over the nail would mean that i have one less hand to you know make sure the tip is uh, applied correctly after using this, I've saw a couple of videos of people using this torch and this is also amazing because you would have just pressed here and just hold it over the nail while you flush cure it. Um, I've been using this torch a lot on my latest videos because I find that it's a lot easier than holding this big one. Um, I love them both and I definitely recommend them, but I have found something better. And in the meantime, before I show you what I found, I'm gonna show you what I use this torch for. I bought this uh, stamper from Shein and quite frankly, I love that it's double-sided because if you are doing a design on a very short nail, you could use this side. And obviously this side is like the standard size. Definitely gonna use the smaller side for short nails. And because I have other stampers which are a lot, a lot larger, I don't need this side. I've learned this cool technique from a YouTuber. I'll link her name somewhere here in the video. Um, so I am going to use this squishy part on my torch. It fits perfectly. Look, look how amazing this is. If you are a gel tech and you wanna use sequence and you hate the fact that um, they stick out and even when you apply your clear gel you still have to be super careful when you're filing because you might file some of the sequence. With this, it eliminates that. And you flush cure it and then you press against the nail. This will make sure your sequins are super flat against the nail. And then when you apply your gel, you don't have to apply so much that the nail is gonna look super thick or that you, you're going to be afraid while you're filing that you're gonna file your sequence. So, this is how I'm using my torch lately and I've, I don't even feel the need to take it off. Even if I don't need to use the squishy bit for sequence, I still leave it here because you can still cure. The light will go through and you can still cure it just fine. So if you have the torch, just get this stamper from Shein or anywhere online, I'm pretty sure you're gonna be fine. Or if you have the two, now you know what you can do. So now I want to show you what I've been using to flush cure uh, the tips and this is it I bought this lamp out of uh, Aliexpress and it works fabulously it has made my work so much easier because I don't have to worry about holding up um, a lamp like this or my torch so it's a USB cord so it's very easy to plug it anywhere it has the clip that you could clip onto the table and of course you have your light it has this uh, button here once you click on it it will turn on and you don't have to worry about uh, it turning off anytime because I found that with this one uh, I needed to always press before I went ahead and um, apply it over the nail with this one once it's on it's on I don't have to worry so it's been clipped onto my table and usually what I do I just bend it down I would apply the tip away from the light and then I'll just go under it and hold it for a few seconds so I hold it for a few seconds, once I'm sure it's not gonna go anywhere. And then I'll ask the person to put their hand under this lamp for 60 seconds to make sure the gel is fully cured. So this helps a lot. You could definitely have this on a corner of your desk and then flush cure 
and carry on doing your nail art. Definitely recommend it to any of you who, who are doing your own nails at home or use the Gelex dupe. Uh, I'm calling it Express Tips now. Um, so if you use that technique, this one is gonna help you a ton. Something else that I found working as a gel tech is that during the winter, I have really hard time using my builder gels because they get really thick. And sometimes you wanna do like a super thin application, especially if you're doing natural nails. I've mentioned on my very first nail room tour that I, I had these builder gels. However, they were quite thick and I didn't think they were like super great for beginners. But in retrospect, I must say, I've found that even other brands do the same. This Kuchu gel that I love so much during the winter gets really thick and I like to apply a thin layer of this anyway. So I found a solution to use this during the winter, which is a mug warmer. Don't mind this stain here because I will explain to you what happened. The hard gels, they get super thick during the winter. I would recommend using this to make it a little bit more softer and easier to work with. It comes with this adapter. I live in the UK, so this is the one that I need to get. You cannot really tell um, how hot this is gonna get. And because I bought this from AliExpress, I didn't have very high expectations, but I had amazing reviews. I got one of these spots of gel uh, from Base One that I used to practice a lot. And what I did, I pressed the button and I think I chose the highest setting. This doesn't show um, the degrees or anything, so you wouldn't know how hot this gets. Obviously, I wouldn't test it by placing my hand on it. And then I placed my, my uh, pot there and I left it there while I was prepping my practice finger. By the time I had everything ready and I wanted to use the gel, I realized my pot was all melted underneath. Basically, this gets so, so, so hot that if you have any plastic pots, this will melt it. And this is why it has this kind of a stain. I removed it right away, and while it was still hot, I, I've cleaned it, but um, I could never get this, and I can't clean it off. Uh, but I've learned my lesson, and now I know what to do. So before I go ahead and I place anything on top of this, regardless if the pot is gonna be uh, glass or whatever, I will apply this coaster first. So you press it on and then you apply the coaster on top and then you go ahead and you place your pot of gel. And that's how you're going to ensure this doesn't melt off and you don't get things like this onto your coffee warmer. So this is the technique that I've learned and I'm going to use from now on before I go ahead and melt my pots away. <laughs> I don't think this would happen with anything that's glass, but just to be on the safe side, I will do the same for this one or primer gels. I would always do it like that. It will warm up enough to have it thin and you have better applications of your builder gels. During the summer, if you find your gels to be really runny, you can put them in the fridge for one hour before your appointments. And this is how you get your gels to work with you all year round. Okay. Let's talk about soak offs. So these are the two methods people usually use. I've used these ones for a while, but I found it that it took it takes a little bit longer. Um, so I went ahead and I purchased these because I thought like as long as the water is warm, uh, it, the process will be faster. I took a, a Gelex class with Insatiable Nails. I'll just leave her link right here. And she taught a very fast method of removing the Gelex tips, which again, I'm not using that term anymore. I'm using Express tips for my stuff. Uh, so, and that was great. I've learned a lot. So I no longer use this system. The only time I would use this, if I am applying one of my express tips and if I mess up something and I want to fix one specific nail, I would use something like this. But, um, if I was to remove the whole set and then redo it again, I would never use this. This is what I'm using. And then I use these zip bags. I would put acetone inside of this. Then the water is here and you would have your nails there for about 10 to 15 minutes. Of course, I'm doing it one hand, but you would use two bags and have the person submerging their hands. You should use a towel to cover so the heat is trapped and this will make the, the process super fast. And I must say that it's very true. I tried it and it works wonders. Make sure you have your Ziploc bags and your bowl to soak off your 
set and i promise you you will find that because this is a metal ball the water will remain hot for a very long time and it will speed up the process and another thing that i love i don't need two containers this is more than enough space i can't remember the size of this but i'll leave you the link so you can have an idea how big this is but it fits the two hands perfectly fine give it a go and let me know how fast you can soak off your sets with using this method so I've spoken about stamping just a while ago just to show you the hack that I had with my torch and the jelly part of the stamper but um, look what I found that's going to help you keep your stamping not messy at all this is a lint roller in a case how amazing is this and what I love the most about it is you could have it on your table and you don't have to worry about uh, having to grab it in order to to use it with this I can just leave it there lay down a paper towel and Just do my stamping and just clean my stamper over here without um, Mess and I love 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 this idea. I got this from Aliexpress It's really convenient because you could just close it and it's not gonna touch anything Because the one that I had before on my drawer he was sticking against everything <laughs> So this is, this is actually perfect. I'm really happy. I've made a trip to my favorite place this weekend. And if you didn't know, it's Poundland. And I got some essentials. Uh, one of the things is this um, wipes. I love these wipes to uh, clean up my table after I'm done with my nail art, to clean up the inside of my lamps, to clean up my practice hands with the, from dust and everything. This is my favorite wipes. Um, I also got this all-in-one disinfectant spray, so I like to go ahead and spray this. Uh, they didn't have the scent that I'm that I most like, um, so I got this one just to try it. It's not like horrible or anything. It, I just have a preference for smell. This one was the only one left on the shelf, and I got it. But this is good. I also went ahead and I bought this spray. I usually buy this one which is super fresh. I don't find the smell super overwhelming, but they had run out of this one. So I got this one and I think it's okay because the summer is coming. While I still have a lot of this one to go through, I just wanna make sure I have some backups. I like to have my products stocked and it smells really good. I must say it smells really good, but if I was to use these and these, I think it would just be overkill. So um, I will use this one also around the house to make sure I use it all. And um, this one, just on my room, I like my room to smell great. So something else that I found in Poundland is this bath mat and um, it's pink. You would guess very well that I'm not gonna use this in my bathroom. So I think it's gonna be super cute to have um, this uh, on my chair. Anything pink, you know that I'm always there. So it's about three pounds, not bad at all, and I love it. It's great to have things that are specific, but I don't like to put labels on most of the things that I buy because if it's pretty to me, I can always see something else rather than what's intended. And yeah, well, it's a bath mat, but I don't, I'm not gonna use it as a bath mat and no one is gonna tell me anything when they see it because it's just gonna look cute. So I found these files. It comes with a pack of five and it doesn't say the grit. I'm not quite sure, but I think they're fine. They were a pound and I got them for my practice hand. So, you know, I wouldn't say this is the best quality for natural nails, but for practicing oh hell yes perfect so they were just a pound for five you can get a couple and have them for your practice sessions why not as you guys know I use this brush to wash my implements uh, before I I take them to my sterilizing box but um, it's getting a little bit <laughs> worn down I can see I think I've dropped it once or twice and it's kind of broken in there but it still works it's fine so this weekend when I went to Poundland, I saw this brush. Don't laugh, it's a dent denture brush, but as I said for the bath mat, this doesn't matter to me. If I see a purpose for something, I don't just stick to what it is. So I bought it because now um, these bristles are much longer and it's going to be good to get into the cracks and crannies. Um, and I think it's gonna work perfectly fine to wash my implements. And I'm quite happy to report that I will replace this one for this one. And while I was in the craft section, I found these brushes. One thing that I 
like is that it has these sponges and these sponges are good to do ombres I've seen a lot of people using sponges to do ombres rather than brushes and I feel like with a sponge it helps because it soaks up a little bit of a color and you wouldn't get like very thick nail from applying a lot of layers so I'm gonna give it a go and these ones here they will be great to do abstract nails the black ones are quite stiff but these ones are really nice you could even use them for applying glitter I would say I don't know I'm just gonna give him a try as I said for one pound I could never go wrong I also bought this blue tack and I used to hate this blue tack so much because I never found like a good use for these if you saw my 2021 nail room you would have seen that um, I had some swatches for transfer foils the marbles and everything on my shelf and I used blue tack to apply those tips there so it's even showing here some of the uses of this blue tack So we've come to an end and I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's a short one, um, just showing you some hacks or maybe things that are um, beginner friendly, like affordable items for beginners. I don't know what would I would call it, but I hope it helps somehow, somewhere. And as usual, thank you so much for watching and I shall see you on the next one. Bye-bye.